time. It says it's showtime. Showtime. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to our podcast, Relationship Alchemy. I'm Jordan Bessonnier. And I'm Olivier Bessonnier. And today we have a super juicy topic because let's be honest, all of our topics are super juicy. <laughs> <laughs> but this one is called How to Get swirly cosmic fusion in your everyday life wow what does that mean <laughs> yeah first of all what does that even mean yeah so how can we create swirly cosmic fusion in our lives in your everyday life. in your everyday life yes so <laughs> no we're not talking about going to a yogurt shop although that sounds very delicious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Instead, we're going to be talking about sacred sexuality, folks. Right, right. Um, it's kind of funny, sacred sexuality. In the mainstream um, idea, you know, it's it's kind of, kind of opposite terms. Yeah. You know, either sacred or sexuality. Sacred people, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, spirituality. Yeah, means being uh, turning away from the body, from yes. the desires, uh -huh. and being monk in a cave. Mm -hmm. So how you know how can sexuality sex, sexuality can be spiritual and sacred? Yeah, this is such an interesting topic to me because for me, I grew up super religious. Like um, my parents were very Catholic. And so to me, it was preached sexuality is nothing but sacred in the yeah. sense of you only have sex if you want to, like, create a baby. Mm. Like, that's how sacred it is, mm. which is a really interesting interpretation of um, the sacredness of <laughs> – I'm trying to say – not anything but sexuality, but the sacredness of union. Yeah. Um, and it's really interesting from that mindset. It really pushed me into this space of not knowing about pleasure. Mm. Um, because it was like, oh my God, you're only supposed to have sex if you want to make a baby. Right. So, yeah where does pleasure fall into sacred sexuality? You know, like from the mindset that my parents had given me. And then in my early 20s, um, I dove into sex work. And it mm. showed me this whole other side of sexuality. And it's so interesting because I think a lot of people would assume that because I sold sex. It took the quote unquote sacredness yeah. out mm -hmm. of sex. Mm -hmm. However, for me, because I was, I was adding a dollar, a monetary amount mm -hmm. to sex. I felt like it even made it more sacred mm -hmm. in the sense of like, wow, people are paying me for this, for this interaction, mm -hmm. you know, and it kind of helped me realign um, sacred sex sacred sexuality in my head even though it it had it it was a stop on my journey to where I'm at now yeah um, I imagine like a reclaiming a re-empowerment yes, yes yeah I'm curious um if um because we we love the broadcast format, but mm -hmm. the idea now is to uh, do that in the Facebook group mm -hmm. uh, so that we can be also interactive. So I wonder, you know, where are you guys at in terms of how you relate to pleasure um, and how you relate to the mainstream society kind of maybe um, impacting that negatively? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, your journey is... Uh, particular <laughs> yeah it is very um, particular but um yeah you know like the transformation from like this heavy repression mm -hmm. to an openness that is not extreme e either you know it's yeah. like it, like you had to go through this kind of extreme uh pendulum to refine your empowerment yeah i i suppose and i imagine i want to i don't want to put words in your mouth mm -hmm. 
um, where now it's like uh, open and um, yeah, it's it's flourishing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Tell us more about that. Yeah, I guess, you know, um, it's, I've been reflecting on these things a lot lately because I'm actually in the process of writing a book mm -hmm. and, um, one of the things I want to write about is the sex work that I did. And for me, sex work was extremely empowering. Um, I got into sex work after being raped. Yeah. And yeah. so for me, it was yeah. this like huge reclamation of my power okay. of like, yeah. yes, like I will now be a sex worker. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think what it really taught me though was that people are just looking for intimacy. Yeah. That's what it really taught me. Yeah. Um, and some people can only access intimacy through like paying a thousand dollars to spend a night with a woman, you know? And it really made me tap into this, this, my inner bikini, I mm. guess. So, mm. so to speak. Um, and just, yeah, I really learned how to hold people in intimacy, mm. if that makes any sense, which relating it to where I'm at now, I think it was a really crucial skill for me to learn um, because I, I would call myself like an intimacy whore, you know, mm. like mm. I love intimacy. I love emotional intimacy. I love sensual intimacy. I love like I, I mean, I call it the ooey gooey chocolate chips yeah. <laughs> of life, you know? Um, and so I look at where I'm at in my journey with sexuality now, and I see all of these, these, these life skills that I developed yeah. through very unseemingly like. Yeah. What, what's the change <laughs> of mindset yeah. between, you know, being like, craving for intimacy but it mm -hmm. feels kind of out of reach mm -hmm. through this kind of you know uh glass wall mm -hmm. like yeah we're supposed to um not necessarily get married but being in the committed relationship yeah. maybe have kids and and that is intimacy but then it feels like a glass wall mm -hmm. that we're living together uh we're sharing so much and at the same time it's hard to touch it. Mm -hmm. That that was me at 30. Mm -hmm. And then I discovered Tantra and dove into so deeply into it mm -hmm. um, that now it's like, it, it's hard for me even to remember. Yeah. Um, but so, yeah, what are, I mean, I want to share mine too, but yeah. what are the, my, the, the shifts of uh, beliefs, mm -hmm. you know, um, that, that can open to this, to this yeah. new paradigm. So I would say that I hit a huge glass wall. Mm. Um, coming out of sex work, I had my first partner who I actually felt pleasure with for the first time ever. And mm. I was like, oh, my God, like, what is this? Like mm. this, you know, pleasure. What is pleasure? And I started to really explore with him. And then sex work didn't seem so aligned for me anymore. And I kept hitting this like wall mm. and it was the inorgasmic experience. Right. right? Mm. And so I was hearing about all these women like, oh, my God, I'm having such good orgasms. And like, oh, my God, like I'm kissing the heavens. I'm like, OK, well, when I have sex, it doesn't feel like yeah. that. What does that mean? And it was in my, after getting out of sex work, also in my early 20s, that I came across Tantra, yeah. um, which for me, I had learned this mindset that sex was supposed to end in orgasm. Yeah. Very orgasm focused, right? The man ejaculates and the woman is supposed to orgasm only once though. Yeah. And I was really searching for a mindset that took me out of that would take me out of that paradigm of being so orgasmic focused. Yeah. And then that's when I came across Tantra. 
And the whole thing that, about Tantra that really got to me, it was, it wasn't about the orgasm. It was about enjoying the connection yeah. and enjoying the journey. Yeah. And that literally blew my world apart. And so the next partner that I had actually was trained in Tantra in the sense of he had gone to like Tantra festivals and like that was my first tantric partner. Mm -hmm. And like our lovemaking at that time for me was like, oh my God, this is a whole new level. Right. Mm -hmm. But then I was still hitting that glass ceiling of not experiencing an orgasm, which really made me crave mm -hmm. um, penetration and like crave more sexual experiences. Like one, I would say I'm a really sexual being to begin with. Mm -hmm. Like I yeah. really enjoy having sex, you know, once a day. Like mm -hmm. for me, that doesn't feel over strenuous. And my part, that partner and I had ended up going our separate ways. And one of the reason was we were not compatible sexually. Mm -hmm. Like he said, he felt fine having sex once every two weeks. Yeah. And I was like, Oh yeah, no bro. Like <laughs> I want to have sex like once a day. Yeah. It's, it's interesting that you had this drive, although mm -hmm. you didn't have the satisfaction. Yes. And I think yeah. that's what made me have the drive even more. Like yeah, of course. the skill that I was already very like sexual to begin with. And then on mm -hmm. top of that, like, okay, I'm not getting this like huge release. I'm not mm -hmm. experiencing sex as other people, as other people are sharing their experiences with me. I'm not like reaching this peak aha moment, like, you know, and then I came across you. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a, just a, a schematic yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> rabbit hole <laughs> so if you guys um don't know we actually met at a contact improv class right. and contact improv is all about feeling the energy and just allowing the energy to be what it is and going on a journey so it's like it is a form of dance and <laughs> you're dancing usually with another person hence why it's called like contact and then the improv is like open to it's not choreographed it's not like it's open to the journey and so we met and there was no talking right and what's your cat name are yeah. you a cat person or a dog person you know <laughs> yeah it really allowed me to drop deep into the energy and to just like wow i really yeah uh, this is like really making me feel a spark and I'm really curious to follow the thread. What's interesting and it's for me uh, the perfect analogy is that the contact dance, yes, we have a point of contact that we need to keep, but then the in order to have a satisfying interaction, we need to feel into each other's energy, mm -hmm. right? And so um, that's really what separates for me, like the first step that separates mm -hmm mainstream or you know where, where do we get our idea of sexuality like yeah. nowadays like porn takes a huge space in terms mm -hmm. of education sexual mm -hmm. education um and of course it doesn't even exist it's only physical it's skin to skin mm -hmm. it's like uh threat th thre thre oh finding the thread no no no, no, no. um <laughs> it, <laughs> <laughs> I don't have English, but it's uh -huh. on the top of my tongue. But we'll say it in French. You're the French word. That, that's okay. okay. <laughs> so it's really about the the skin contact, mm -hmm. right? So, um, but in order to know each other, we had to tap into each other's energy. So, what mm -hmm. does it mean for somebody who does not know what energy means? Like it, it seems um, hard to conceive. Yeah. Right. So. Um, yeah, it's something to experience. Um, and it's, it's connected to movement and to breath, mm -hmm. right? And so I, can I can I feel this person where they are going to move or how how they express themselves? And if they have a movement, you know, can I feel the the vibration of that and mm -hmm. re, um, understand it, respond to that? Mm -hmm. So um, so the, the the communication is it's way more on an energy energetic. Uh, level mm -hmm. and that's one of the primary key for me like mm -hmm. um what makes uh, this 
next level mm -hmm. of sexuality uh, re-satisfying is that, like you said, it's not goal-oriented. So mm -hmm. however it's going to look like doesn't mm -hmm. matter. Mm -hmm. um, and letting go of expectations mm -hmm. because then it opens this door of playfulness. Yeah. Right. So it's about playing with each other's energy, mm -hmm. this a discovery. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, one thing that's really important for me is emotional intimacy. Mm -hmm. Right. So emotional intimacy is knowing how you feel mm -hmm. and um, what's going on for you, what are your processes, mm -hmm. um, what you like, what you don't like. And having this emotional intimacy plus the energy playfulness mm -hmm. That for me brings a level of connection mm -hmm. that, I mean, yeah, just um, rubbing doesn't, uh -huh. uh, friction. yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it, trying to say friction. friction. Yes, I got it, folks. <laughs> friction. Thrusting. Thrusting. Oh, okay. Friction, close enough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, getting into this space, like, um, yeah, what what are the best moments, you know, that that we can that we have accessed? Yeah. Uh, for me, it's like this doorway. This mm -hmm. is the doorway to access that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for me, I love that we're talking about doorways because mm, you know yeah. one of the things that we shared in our um, <sighs> summary of what today's mm. topic was going to be about is practical tips to actually sure. get yeah. to this space. You know, like sure, this sounds all good in theory and is very, very meta, like, oh, Tantra and all of this. But for me, like one practical tip. Um, so my first, the first practical tip would be letting go of expectations, yep. you know, which I shared finding Tantra, like really mm. brought that home of letting go of the orgasm. And then two, I would say um, the timelessness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For me, that's huge. Like, and it's really interesting, you know, like now we have a child yeah. and our time that we used to spend having hours, you know, of like making love is now like 20 minutes. Yeah. And I definitely find myself like in this like kind of go-getter mode of like checklist, yeah. like, okay, we have 20 minutes to have sex. <laughs> like I need to check this off my list. Yeah. And you know, that really dampens the mood, yeah. the intimacy. And it's something that both of us can feel when we're coming in with this mindset. And so my practical tip that I want to give is leaning into the timelessness yeah. of sexuality and taking the time to, first of all, slow down. Yeah. Right. I mean, porn really taught me everything happens fast. Yeah. You know, there's, you know, to the cheesy example of the guy with the pizza box showing up at the woman's house. And then all of a sudden they're like into penetrative sex. And mm. you're like, OK, where's the foreplay? You know, and like. I even hate to call it foreplay because. To me, all of it is sex, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All of it is sex. So getting rid of the mindset that like only penetrative sex is sex mm -hmm. yeah. was extremely helpful. And then, you know, lavishing in the spaciousness to create this like super juicy lovemaking yeah. of like, okay, let's slow down. And this is what I also do in contact improv as well. Like if I try to just like start dancing with someone, yeah. it's going to be super chaotic. I've gotten elbowed in the face before. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, it's, it's just not going to work as smoothly. And so when I, when I slow down, tap into myself first and foremost, because how can I connect with someone else if I'm not even connected to myself Yeah, and take the time to like, enjoy the breath work yeah. of like sex and enjoy like the soft you know the <laughs> caress and the juiciness and like to really feel it in like every single one of my cells yeah you know and then from there because if the mind is focused on what's next then uh -huh. it can't register really the sensation yeah. that it's receiving yes so exactly. just like letting go of that mm -hmm. also opens the space to 
be way more present mm -hmm. and that's like presence is the big, biggest key uh to be really present to what is happening like mm -hmm. that that caress is like okay if i let go of everything else i can really take it in yeah and so that would be my third practical tip of presence mm. and i feel like i hear this word all the time like presence presence and it's like okay what does presence actually yeah. mean so what does it mean for you? Well, it means that uh, my focus, my attention um, is limited. You know, I cannot embrace the whole world simultaneously. So what is it uh, clogged with? Mm -hmm. If it's clogged with thoughts of how it should be or how it's been before the last time and I have an agenda to make it the same this time, then my focus and attention is not fully available to what's present. Mm -hmm. So presence <laughs> is being able to uh, give full attention mm -hmm. to what's happening in the present. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, as I'm receiving this touch, can I also feel the breeze from uh, the door open and hear the birds? And so it impose this timelessness mm -hmm. because then I don't have any bandwidth mm -hmm. to think about the future, the present, mm -hmm. the, the past. I'm all immersed in this moment and this moment becomes timeless mm -hmm. and then it, it just grows, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So then I'm open to whatever's going to happen mm -hmm. and I can be surprised, mm -hmm. right? And then it becomes playfulness. Mm -hmm. So the, the presence is for me really the gateway uh to to like a high hidden mm -hmm. experience because then i can put all my focus on receiving mm -hmm. uh be, being attentive to my sensations mm -hmm. and therefore instead of being limited or filtered mm -hmm. then i can fully receive my sensations mm -hmm. and i re if i really open to that then it's going to be up to a 10 yeah. and also in my 10 becomes a becomes a 12 my 12 becomes a 10 right mm -hmm. so my capacity for receiving and feeling and sensation like just expands as we can expand our capacity for presence mm -hmm. then our capacity for feeling mm -hmm. Uh, expands as well. It might mm -hmm. start just like that, and this right, is all right. I can give presence to, and therefore this is all I can feel. Mm -hmm. And by training this muscle, it's muscle, mm -hmm. uh, we can expand it and be just curious on the, how far it can go. <laughs> yeah, so I feel like you just definitely described um, presence so amazingly. And, you know, I recently went to Burning Man <laughs> and going there it's all about presence right like first of all there's no service right so yeah can be distracted can't... the opposite of presence is distraction <laughs> yes so it's like this prime environment right and i think what probably gives about like 90 percent of the magic is literally just being present yeah because there's no distractions. There's no service. Um, uh, distraction to focus on something outside external, external. of the container. Yeah. So the container of the desert, the, the yeah. desert or the bedroom. Uh -huh, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it was like, okay, no service. Um, I went without you, mm -hmm. which was like huge. And it's like, okay, I'm not gonna, you know, I spent a lot of time missing you. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, I'm in the most like amazing playground in the world and I really want to explore what's out there. And by having no distractions and by allowing myself to just fully open up to this experience, um, which I find in the bedroom as well, of like, okay, if I get rid of, you know, put my phone on airplane yeah. mode, our son is with a babysitter, you know, um, it allows me to open up to this experience and suddenly this is like what I love about sensual intimacy. And, you know, I've just like recently been sharing this term and I get a lot of questions of like, well, what is sensual intimacy? Hmm. And for me, sensual intimacy is like when we're just both present and we're in, and we're present to our senses, hmm. right? It's not necessarily about sexuality, it's just about being open and present to our actual 
physical sensations. Mm -hmm. And so this for me is a huge gateway into sexual intimacy. Mm -hmm. And for me, I can experience sensual intimacy with just about anyone out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and for me, it doesn't mean I'm necessarily going to go into sexual intimacy, mm -hmm. but for me, it means, okay, one, how present can we be mm. to this moment right now? Two, how can we let our senses open up to like every single mm. experience that the container, whether it's Burning Man or our bedroom is offering, you know, like, can I like feel the like silk sheets on my yeah. skin, you know, like just how deeply can I go into my senses? And so, you know, the five senses of like sight, touch, smell, hearing, and I'm forgetting one right now, uh, smell. Yeah. I, I don't know if I said that, but anyways, like just how deeply can I go into these senses? And then that's when I start to feel like an animal, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like that's when the primal being comes out. So I love you, that you bring in the animal yeah. because usually the animal is considered considered as opposite to spiritual. Mm. And what I love mm -hmm. is when I can feel both equally, Yeah, which is like feeling the primal reality of this yeah. plane, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> which 3D. is yeah. the sweat, the skin, the raw, the... The groundedness, um, the um, the desires, right? The um, and even maybe uh, some fear or some anxiety, like all that is happening is very primal. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I'm also, wow, this is amazing. I'm in this like cosmic space. Yeah, and I think that's like so interesting because I would almost say that's like an idea of colonialism of like the animal is not spiritual, right? It is um, <laughs> versus like. So you know, many, some yeah. of these native, other yeah. cultures, native like, cultures, you know, indigenous cultures from mm. around the world. A lot of Eastern spirituality says that, yes, everything is spiritual. Yeah. You know, like everything is sacred. Yeah. And it's through the mundanity that we find the most yeah. spiritual, spiritual experience we can. Yeah. Know? Everything is an expression of spirit. Yes. Whether it's a tree or wolf or owl or mm -hmm. like, uh, or us as human, like mm -hmm. everything comes from intention. Yeah. And so um, I, I love that. You know, it's like I relate so much to that uh, vision of the world where, where so my perception, my presence is mm -hmm. opening to, okay, receiving the intention of spirit. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So it, it's, it anchors like, you know, I don't know if anybody was expecting us talking about, okay, well, you, you, you know, you light up the candles and you <laughs> sit in yoga, yoga position and uh -huh. then, you know, you breathe until, and then we breathe together, which means we stay separate and we go into this spiritual sp space, but now it's disconnected, mm -hmm. right? Um, so that's not what we're talking about. <laughs> it's about integrating anything, everything yes. and integrating mm -hmm. like this, cosmic opening mm -hmm. through our bodies and through our sensations mm -hmm. and through our animal self and so nothing is rejected because most of um uh, like a lot of religions or spiritual practices in the world tend to reject something yeah and so either they reject the physical body which means to be spiritual we need to get out of the spiritual body so that we can be in the spiritual space, which means mm -hmm. not in this plane uh, or sexuality is rejected mm -hmm. as not spiritual. Mm -hmm. um, but that's why I love about the, the, the tantric vision um, mm -hmm. is that everything is spiritual and we can embrace everything and we're not rejecting any part of ourselves. Mm -hmm. So that is the direct path to wholeness. Wholeness mm -hmm. is about not rejecting any part of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And if some of the parts are shadow parts, mm -hmm. Or, you know, where, where this shadow comes from, from trauma, from negative beliefs, mm -hmm. where do they come from, mm -hmm. uh, where they uh, from um, personal experience or were they implanted by, you know, the uh, collective uh -huh. and the culture. Mm -hmm. So shedding all that for me is really the path. Shedding, you know, is this negative belief about myself, about sexual, am I rejecting a part of me? 
um, and is it implanted by somebody else, mm -hmm. something else, whether it's a collective or my parents or a traumatic experience, mm -hmm. or you know, how can can I bring it forward instead of rejecting it? Can I yeah. bring it forward, look at it, and see where the the gift is, so it becomes also a a gift and therefore a part of me, mm -hmm. and that's bringing wholeness, mm -hmm. right? So it's it's not like a you know turnkey switch. All right, here we are. We were not, and now you know, it's a transformational uh, journey, and yeah. it's like step by step, little by piece by piece, mm -hmm. reclaiming uh, every part of ourselves, physical and spiritual, together as a wholeness, as a one thing that mm -hmm. we can. My, I can put my presence and re perceive all all that at at once. So, yeah, it's a muscle. Yeah, <laughs> and you know something about what you're saying. Um, you know, wholeness, this wholeness, yeah. you know, in our summary, we talked about sacred union. Yeah. And so that really brought me to like, okay, what is sacred union? Then? Yeah. Like, what does that mean? So, you know, now we, we, we've, we've broken down like what it means to be like whole with yourself, right? Yeah. Fully present, um, slipping into that timelessness, the slowness yeah. of it all. And so now, you know, you're going to connect with your partner. Like, so ooh. that's my practic practical tip. Uh -huh. It starts with harmonizing. Mm. And I love that, you know, mm -hmm. when we, um, you know, want to be together and we just, mm -hmm. you know, it's not like, oh, yeah, I'm supposed to, you know, massage her here and mm -hmm. then touch her there because it's going to push some buttons to mm -hmm. wake up. No, it's just like melting mm -hmm. into each other mm -hmm. and fusing our energies mm -hmm. to be curious to what's going to emerge. Mm -hmm. And so the, the coming together of both our energy, mm -hmm. the union, mm -hmm. how does it un unfold, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So we usually mm -hmm. <laughs> start with that, mm -hmm. with harmonizing. Mm -hmm. um, there are many ways to do that. Yeah. But just, um, yeah, spooning or mm -hmm. uh, laying heart to heart. Mm -hmm. um, something that removes time mm -hmm. so that we can go into timeless less. Because energy has its own life. Yeah. Right. So if we, if, okay, if we just um, lay on top of each other, then nothing's going to happen. Mm -hmm. On the contrary, if we can tap into stillness, mm -hmm. then something is going to emerge. Mm -hmm. Like music comes from silence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> listen to Never Pink Floyd. <laughs> also, don't listen to Pink Floyd. So. Yeah. No, I mean, what I love about listening to Pink Floyd is like they hit a chord or they hit a note, and it's all about listening to how it carries. Mm -hmm. It's like the silence or the, the, the vibration in between. That's why their music is so slow. Mm. Because it hits and I then know, never... wah, and then it hits again and yeah, <laughs> it's all I... about the space in between, <laughs> not about how fast you can hit notes. Right, right. It's a really good analogy, and you know, for me, sacred union. Um, I like to describe it. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna take us out of the the meta and down into uh, the 3D a little bit of science. Oh yeah. Um, so, you know, to sacred union, another word for this, I would like to say is co-regulation, mm -hmm. right? So, like, how can we allow yeah. our, allow us to be in a space where our nervous system yeah. link up with each other? <laughs> it's like plug, like. Yeah, a direct, <laughs> like, a, a direct plug and. Yeah. Avatar, you know, like. yeah. surprise, we're, we're actually connecting <laughs> <laughs> to each other. Um, Truly, I mean, I love the metaphor, but if it yeah. works so well in the movie, it's because it taps into something that's Basically actually real. Something. Yeah, don't even get me started on Avatar because <laughs> I love that movie. We watch it like <laughs> ten times. <laughs> yeah, we watch it's it all sure. the time. <laughs> but you know, it's true. Co-regulation is a fact. Yeah. And we as nervous systems mm. literally need co-regulation and nothing brought this home more than the birth of our child. Yeah. So when a human is born, 
their nervous system actually does not have the ability to regulate itself. This means that a baby, a newborn baby cannot control its own temperature. It has no idea how to do that. Um, Emotions. Emotions. So if a a baby and even up to a child, you know, Mm. feel something like they do not know how to get themselves back to a state of homeostasis. Yeah. And, you know, coming at it from that perspective of like, okay, our nervous systems actually need time to, to like link into each Mm. other really drives it home for me Mm, and allows me to like really understand, you know, I'm, I, sometimes I have like a very linear mind in the sense of like, I need the facts to (laughs) understand these like very heady, heady concepts. And so just knowing like, okay, if we take 10 minutes out of our day to literally just lay with each other, yeah, you know, no expectations of where yeah. it's going. No, there's no like even um, playfulness involved. It's literally just laying together. Yeah. And just it's al- the gate. It's, it's gateway, the gate. Yes, know? exactly. It's the gateway. And just allowing our nervous systems to sync yeah. up. You know, this is when breath becomes involved. Yeah. Um, even if you don't try you'll most likely find yourself breathing on the same rhythm. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, (laughs) yeah, breath is, I mean, yoga and all those um, teachings, they're, they're awesome, but they also teach how to breathe, but this is the opposite. It's like the harmonizing opens up to like the breath happens by itself. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's about letting, putting presence to, okay, I'm present with myself. I was saying, being surprised with the rhythm, mm-hmm. with the intensity or how much, like the range. And so, oh, we're not sinking. Oh, now we're sinking, mm-hmm. etc. Mm-hmm. And so I guess that's like my my next practical tip mm-hmm. is, you know, make this space to just spend five minutes together just laying. Yeah. You know, um, we do this in the morning when we wake up, you know, it's so sweet. We have like our toddler slapping us in the face, telling <laughs> us to get out of bed. We're like, no, we're going to co-regulate so we can start our day off right. You know? Yeah. And it definitely. It's a big game changer. It, it allows our nervous systems to like fuse. And I mean, I personally love your nervous system. <laughs> it's a very calm nervous system. I get I've never been to France yet, but I I can tap into what France possibly what it might possibly feel like to be in the south of France just by <laughs> laying with your nervous system. <laughs> well, I, I love I mean, I love the um, I did not know. Mm-hmm what a black nervous system would be (laughs) and since tapping into yours i'm like how now i understand those r&b songs where they come from (laughs) exactly exactly and it's really i heard the sound but now i I understand the vibration where it comes Mm -hmm. from and how it feels physically to Mm -hmm. produce that sound Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) surprise we're coming out with an r&b album (laughs) um so yeah that would be my other practical tip um to reach you know sacred union yeah and for me like this is why i love the title of this podcast episode which by the way i came up with like no surprise (laughs) um how to get swirly cosmic fusion in your everyday life Mm -hmm. you know and we were going to call it like sacred sexuality. And it's like, no, no, no. Like we need something more than sacred. How does it sexuality. feel? Yeah. How does, how does sacred sexuality yeah. actually feel? Because, yeah. you know, I think this happens to be like a buzzword in our culture mm. right now. Um, and so like swirly cosmic fusion to me, that's what union feels like. Mm. So it's like this space. And it's so funny because I see it in like darkness and this is like, I'm going to get like meta again, but like, I see it as like my energy, right. And my energy has colors and vibrancy and it like moves Mm. and breathes. And then I see like your energy (laughs) and your energy has colors and it moves and it breathes. And it's, it's this like living tangible thing. And then my energy, you know, begins to dance with your energy and it creates Mm. this like beautiful, 
beautiful explosion, mm -hmm. swirly explosion of cosmic fusion. Right? Yeah. And so I do see it, you know, in my mind's eye as this like this colorful, like this weaving of tapestry, so to say. Mm. And I can feel that with us just standing here. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't need to be in a sexual space, although I love being in a sexual space and getting to connect like that. And so just by like tuning into that a little bit more and like practicing these practical things to get me there, it becomes this like fusion and yeah, this cosmic fusion of union. Yeah. And so I can do this with you, right? I can do this with my son mm. and I can do this with the plants and the trees mm. and, you know, very spiritual. Mm. But I love doing it with you. You know, as my husband, mm -hmm. it's my favorite. I would say probably my favorite activity on the planet. <laughs> I love having sex. And I love having sex with you. You know, we've like, I don't know how many other people can relate, but I'm sure if you're married, mm -hmm. <laughs> you could probably relate to the mundanity of life. Yeah. Of like, okay, we're in this space now where we're sharing resources financial resources we have a child that we're taking care of and you know we're also trying to make a living yeah you know as well as tend to other relationships mm. familial ties you know um while also trying to have experiences and so sometimes i feel like at least in our relationship sometimes the mundanity can just be not so spiritual, you yeah. know, and not so sexy yeah. when we're talking about bills or like when we're changing our child's diapers and I'm like, Oh, I, this is the least sexy place for me. And so by, you know, having this bird's eye view, I guess, of swirly cosmic fusion, it allows for these like mundane, mundane everyday tasks to somewhat mm. become like no this is the spiritual path is through the mundanity yeah for me it's a gift every time you know i i make dinner or i change the diaper it's like okay i'm i'm losing uh care mm -hmm. and then it comes back as connection because mm -hmm. i get uh our sounds so genuinely ecstatic and happy to like <laughs> when he sees me or uh -huh. you know when he's playful or you know when i walk through the door and mm -hmm. you're like coming to me with a kiss and mm -hmm. it's um it's like this this giving on the mundane is this huge uh feedback of connection mm -hmm. um i wanted to also mention that one of the um the times that i felt the most like fireworks with mm -hmm. you in in um it, with sex is actually you know going back to the thrusting i'm glad i got that word back <laughs> because of, yeah. that's that's the image that we you know the the uh when when does the um firework happens well more like faster thrusting or mm -hmm. like um stronger right but for me it's been the opposite where we find a point of connection mm -hmm. And we just move slightly, mm -hmm. right? And just like the moving slightly uh, triggers all those like electrical paths. That's mm -hmm. the way I see it. And we're just this giant loop of mm -hmm. electricity and energy um, of connection. Mm -hmm. When I find this place with you, this is where everything expands, mm -hmm. right? And then we can... I, I feel like we can bring this back um, into, yeah, every day I'm making breakfast. And, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of the opposite of the um, what, what's commonly accepted. Mm -hmm. You know, what's commonly accepted in the mainstream society is that a uh, woman after menopause, mm -hmm. uh, they feel 50% less mm -hmm. and they're dry and, you know, they're on the down roll um slope of their sexuality my experience with um women who have trained themselves or explore this path of sacred sexuality and tantra and lighting up their um their energy system their mm -hmm. electric system is that 
the best, best sex happens after. Mm -hmm. Like all of a sudden it opens up like a whole universe and a whole mm -hmm. um, freedom. It yeah. opens so much freedom um, that there, I mean, I, I, I know it's not a general generalization about women in society, but mm -hmm. Uh, the few women that I've dated that had um, embraced this path, the best sex happens after the menopause, which is like, can you believe this? I don't believe you. Don't yeah. Know. Can you guys believe me? <laughs> yes. It's my personal experience. But it didn't happen like at when, when menopause happened, like, oh, now I need to do something. Yeah. Right. Because then the only solution that's left is pills. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's just the physical level. Physic the um, addressing the physicality and the, the symptoms will not open up this this space. So mm -hmm. the training needs to start ten years earlier, yeah. <laughs> so that when um, we hit that moment, it's it opens a door instead of okay, what you know, what should I do? It becomes yeah. the new reality, and it's mm -hmm. same for men, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, those are. Um, yeah, I hope uh, we gave some. Is it valuable for you? Even if you're watching the replay, tell, tell us in the comments. Yeah. Um, how do you relate? And if uh, what what did you learn new? Uh, if you want to write in the comments, you know, any um, takeaways, mm -hmm. like something you like a, a th like three words or you know uh, like a brief takeaway that for you hit, hit something new mm -hmm. that you didn't think could be possible. Um, that's what I geek about. <laughs> yeah. So for me, I love like, you know, how do I, how do I get more of this? Mm. Like how, you know, coming from this like super Catholic upbringing mm. that was very rigid and then discovering like, oh, I'm inorgasmic and then discovering like, oh, actually my body has these capabilities, but because I've only trained my nervous system a certain way, mm. I've been unable to access you know, certain points. Mm. Um, and so this is how I went from like being inorgasmic to actually like female ejaculation. Yeah, right. You know, which... inorgasmic to female ejaculation. Yeah. By the way, folks, it's possible. Yeah. Actually, and... it's possible for every woman. Yeah. It's possible for every woman. And like this came from training in the sense of like allowing more neural pathways to yeah. open up. The pathways are already there. Yeah. Your nervous system has already yeah. done the work while you were being formed in your mother's womb, yeah. right? It's either it's, dormant or activated. Yes, exactly. And so the dormancy um, part of the journey for me has been removing the blockages that have caused certain dormancy. That's the de-learning. Yes. And so like, you know, if... I'm someone out there in the world who's like listening to this podcast. How can I get more yeah. of what we're talking about? Like, what's the next step? What do I do? Where do I go? Sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to try to give uh, as much as we can for free. But of course, we have a mentoring program and we have workshops, um, in-person workshops to explore all that. But mm -hmm. we're not here to uh, give you a pitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's, uh, yeah, wherever you want to go with us or anybody else, um, please explore. Yeah, it's possible. Oh, I love it. Uh, I want to be more present, less goal oriented, and enjoy the journey more during intimacy. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank mm. you. So, your name does not appear for us uh, right now. So, I would love to uh, say the name, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> the Facebook user. <laughs> so, yeah. Um... But beautiful takeaway. Mm hmm. There you go. There you go. Now you can <laughs> see you. it if you're watching the YouTube or if you're rewatching our live. Yeah, that's that's the whole journey, right? Is like Thank you, you for synthesizing that. Yeah, thank you. Because for me, that's the whole journey, whether it's where whether I'm inorgasmic or now I'm at this beautiful space of like female ejaculation. Mm. And I still want to know how can I be more present? Yep. Less goal oriented. I still fall into being goal oriented, yeah. you know, like the checklist comes out like, oh shit, we have a babysitter for yeah. an hour. Let's hurry up and have penetrative sex so we can go pick up our child. And like, yeah. you know, I, I still fall into that. And like 
to just enjoy the journey, you yeah. know, to not put the pressure on myself or you yeah. or like the pressure, you know, of just letting it all fall away and melt away and for allowing like what's actually there to come out. Yeah, the pressure is the opposite of presence and opposite of this going to this gateway that opens up to this magical world of connection between the sacred and the physical. Mm -hmm. And like when we reach that place, it's like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I... So we have another comment of thanks for sharing and for the knowledge. I like the breathing together and just allowing the vibrations to sink. Yeah. Your nervous system will thank you. Like, yes. You know. Your nervous system is creative, mm -hmm. magical. Uh, it's it's um, wired to do that. Yeah. You know, <laughs> all those like superpowers, like it, mm -hmm. it, we're actually wired to do that. But um, yeah, it's just that the, the tension and the training or mm -hmm. the lack of training, mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, um yeah train or untrained is yeah. really what it is yeah uh, because of like the training is the mainstream society mm -hmm. and you know parents and tv drama and school they're not the best teachers for all and that porn. So, and porn yeah. of course so it, <laughs> it means like putting energy into researching um information and mm -hmm. uh, exploring and practicing and yeah mm -hmm. yeah and you know we're we're lifelong students. Like yeah. the second you think yeah. you know something, surprise, <laughs> something else comes along, you know? Yeah. All right. So thank you so much for yeah. your attention. Um, yeah. Uh, the three pillars that I really like to think about when it comes to intimacy and creating a commit, committed relationship that is sustainable mm -hmm. are, well, we talked about sacred yeah. sexuality today. Mm -hmm. uh, we touched on de-learning and um, piercing our trauma and uh -huh. our shadow dissolving i don't like to like it, it's about whole, wholeness so it's not about dismissing them it's not mm -hmm. about oh you're bad you know you so this this nagging part of me needs to go away because mm -hmm. it wants mm -hmm. so it's about understanding it and dissolving and uh, yeah knowing uh, um finding the gift and the message from the shadows and the trauma so it's about exploring that Part number two mm -hmm. and part number three is the conscious communication. And, you know, we're going to have a separate podcast yeah, on each. each pillar because we just believe so strongly in them. And yeah, to talk about them for 10 minutes would not do it justice. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, I hope you guys really enjoyed our talk. Yeah, on... conscious communication for me is the gate to emotional intimacy, mm -hmm. right? Because if we can, if I, if we can both express ourselves so we, we we give you the picture when it's physical, sexuality, mm -hmm. but uh, conscious communication is the same thing through words. Emotional intimacy, yeah. folks. It exists. It's a need for me. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Vital so, need. I hope uh, you guys enjoyed our talk on how to get swirly cosmic fusion in your everyday life. And I hope you guys go to a yogurt shop. All right. <laughs> Why not? Let's have ice cream now. <laughs> Alrighty. Be kind and be well, folks. And we'll see you on our next podcast. Next week. Bye. All right.